We've shown how much volume an accelerator pump produces per shot, but many questions still remain about the position of the pump lever arm, so it's time to cover some of those today. Let's go. So first is to cover really basic of why we need an accelerator pump shot, and what it does is to help the transition off low RPM, low speed, low load to a higher load, higher R RPM situation. So that shot helps from transfer off the idle circuit, the transition circuit, and getting into the main metering circuit of the carburetor. That sh little bit of shot is needed to kind of give it a little bit more fuel to help it get to that point. So the pump is very uh, critical when it comes to the operation of the carburetor. Unfortunately, not a lot is known about it. It just seems to be Misunderstood, I think, is the best word. We just assume that, you know, I hit the gas, I adjust it, it gives it a big shot of fuel, and it helps me get to wide open throttle and cruising down the road and or racing or whatever the situation may be. And yeah, that is true, but that shot isn't near as big as we think it is. We covered that pretty extensively in another video where we actually disassembled it and showed per pump how much volume that an accelerator pump on an Edelbrock carburetor anyway produces. And we did that with multiple different positions and we did it with multiple different size nozzles as well too to show the uh, if there was any difference between all of those. And that's a really good video. So if you haven't seen that one, be sure to check that out after this one because it'll help you put all the pieces together. But really what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show how much travel that each position on this lever produces. There seems to be a lot of confusion of that. People say, well, I, I've, you know, it's a 600 CFM carburetor. I've tried it in the middle hole where it came from the factory. I've tried it in the bottom hole, top hole. It made no difference at all. It's giving it the same shot of fuel. Well, it really isn't. And we're going to measure that and we're going to show you that exactly how that happens today. So let me go grab another carburetor that we're going to cut up and we'll show you exactly what happens. So let me go make that modification real quick. We'll come back to the bench and I'll show you what I did. This is one of my parts carburetors. Unfortunately, it had some internal issues. Couldn't be used again, so don't feel too sorry for it. So what we did is we went ahead and I cut open a window here in the accelerator pump well so we could visually see how that travels up and down through there. That plunger doesn't operate on the full travel of the pump. That's one thing I think people just don't think about or overlook or just assume that the travel of that pump and that cup at the bottom of the accelerator pump travels a much further distance. And if it did, yes, you would could potentially get a much bigger shot of fuel. But when we talked about the volume of how much of these produce, it isn't that much. It's two to three uh, cc's every time you hit that. Now that is not a lot of volume if you can measure that out or visualize how much uh, fluid that is. It's not a lot. And you can see in the video here really what that looks like as you cycle the throttle, just how limited that is. So the distance we're going to measure today is fairly finite. It's fairly small. And when we take these measurements, we have to be a little careful, but I'm going to try to mark these uh, well enough uh, so we can look at it and see it. And we can see where the pump starts and then how far down it goes into the the chamber there so it's a little it's a little difficult i think but uh we should be able to visualize this pretty easily and we're going to test it in all three positions now i will tell you that the pump uh position on the uh, lever that's furthest away i never use it it's the leanest position it's not really useful or beneficial all the carburetors start in the middle position or they will start at the upper uh, position closest to the pivot point uh, on the bigger CFM carburetors. It's just the way Edelbrock tunes it. The the one on the very bottom almost don't even use. But there are certain situations where sometimes it's it's made a bit of a difference. So I guess it's okay to have it there. So let's get a really close up shot of this, and we'll start to measure the stroke of each position, and then we'll compare them all at the end. We're gonna measure this in two spots. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, top edge of the pump because that will give us a reference point that we can consistently measure each time. So we will measure it where it is at rest with no uh, uh, pressure from the throttle on it. 
and then where it goes when it pumps all the way down into there. So I think that'll probably be the best and we can kind of measure that distance and then the distance is, is important. We'll, we'll actually try to measure that, but really what's critical is what the difference is between the two. So I think I've got a number of different colored markers here. I think this will work if we just put a mark on the outside of the uh, uh, carburetor here. Hopefully it'll hang on to it and uh, we'll be able to look at it, but let's do that way. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, we'll test this in the first one. I'm going to move the arm down to the lowest position and we'll start there and we'll just move our way up. You can see the red mark there. It's, I tried to make it really on the top of it. Uh, we'll see what we have on the bottom side here, but it's a little difficult, so I apologize. I'm going to block some of your view here probably, but let's see here. So all the way down, cup is seated, and let's mark that. Okay, we've got that marked, and hopefully you can see that on there. It's a little difficult. I have to kind of do this a little bit off camera, but uh, when you cycle that, that's where it starts. That's where it ends up. Just make sure that the cup isn't restricting that. So it is just tried to measure that from, again, the top edge of the uh, base of the pump cup holder there. And we can measure it, I think, both. So we'll do that. I may have to, uh, I'll, I'll try the middle position here in just a minute. So we may have to erase these uh, or remove those off there. We'll just see how that looks here in just a quick second. But I'm gonna go ahead and take this measurement right now and then we'll talk about them all here in just a minute. All right, we learned quite a bit there actually. So the challenge was really is, is getting a good clean mark. Now I thought about it a little bit and maybe I could have scribed it instead of using the marker. Uh, but it was close enough. I think it gave me a good indication of where that falls. Now, the other challenge is because this is cut out uh, down here, uh, was just making sure that when we're all the way down, just to give the cup a little push, just to make sure that it wasn't hung up on there. And I did notice that a, a couple of times, but uh, I could have cut that out a little bit lower, but uh, honestly, it was uh, it was good enough for what we wanted to. So we did learn a lot. There is some difference in here. So let's take a look at the chart and we'll see what those differences are. Now, when you look at the hole that's furthest away, the pump distance or measurement from its resting position to all the way open is 0.288. So not a lot of travel. You know, we're not talking about you know, half an inch or three quarters of an inch, an inch, the way some folks look because of the depth of that uh, accelerator pump well, it's actually quite less than that because if you notice, the pump operates at the bottom part of the well, not at the upper part of the well. So a little bit interesting. So furthest, that was a distance of that it traveled. Now we get into the middle pump, we start to see that there is some difference. The middle pump is the factory setting for the 500, the 600, the 650. Uh, it's where that, that's where it rests at. So that travel point approximately, now you, you might get some different measurements if you did this as well, but I think this really gets us really close in the bar, ballpark. So that's a difference between of travel between the middle and the furthest pump of 0 0.03 something, 0 0.035. Uh, I'll leave it on the screen. Uh, I'll do the math later. Uh, but again, when we move for the, the, the position that's closest to the pivot point is where we see the biggest shot of fuel. Now, this is the travel distance. Remember, this is how far the pump travels. And this really tells us why that the pivot point or the the, the the position closest to the pivot point gives you the most travel. We measured it. It is approximately, I would say, within a few thousands. We're probably right on the money here, uh, 0.387, and we're looking at 0.1 almost. I'll, again, I'll leave that uh, number on the screen after I take a calculator of that. But that tells us the 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 distance that that pump travels in those positions so when we say that we're 
trying to get a bigger shot of fuel and we say that it moved from the middle pump to the, the position closest to the pivot point, it's to get a more stroke of fuel. And that is what that is doing. It is giving us, the difference between those two is giving us that distance of stroke additional based on those positions. So that's why the it's accelerator pump position is critical. And it's also the fun one because really you don't have to spend any money on the carburetor right out of the box you can make that position so you can figure out if you need more fuel or less fuel. So if you have that 650 or even if you've got the 800 or 750 and the factory position for that linkage rod is in the pivot point or the point closest to the pivot point, you can move it down and see if taking away fuel helps your situation or makes it worse. If it does, as you're tuning, then you know that you need to add more fuel. And then you can start looking at step-up springs and rods and jets uh, and all the other little details in the tuning process. So I hope that cleared up a little bit. I know it's a little confusing uh, because you can't visually see it. It looks like it's the same. But we're talking about fairly small numbers here, but it is certainly uh, makes a big difference. And if you reference back to the... Uh, accelerator pump video where we measured the actual output uh, in the furthest um, uh, position and I think the closest was the only two that we did. Uh, there's a significant amount of CC difference between these two. So it, it tells you why you're getting more fuel now that we can look and see what the actual uh, leverage looks like or the, the how that uh, operates the pump. So if you have any questions on this one, don't hesitate leave them down below. I think now between those uh, couple of videos we've done on accelerator pumps, that should help clear it up. You know, sacrificing a pump uh, certainly wasn't exactly fun, but uh, or sacrificing a carburetor wasn't fun. But again, that's a parts carburetor any, anyway. So anyway, uh, leave your comments down below, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, this will help you understand why uh, making those uh, position changes on the accelerator pump lever uh, makes a big difference of how much uh, fuel your engine is going to get. We'll see you guys on the next one.